you can win this R35 GTR and $5,000 cash. Today we are dropping all of our next designs. One of your favorite items from the first drop was the chrome tee, so we made that into a hoodie but we also restocked the chrome tee as well. One of your past favorite designs as well has been the Supra tee, so we made that into a hoodie. And one of our super OG designs, the Legalize R34 t-shirt is also now live. We got that revamped, the whole new design. We have this racing long sleeve, which is inc like incredibly comfortable. We also have the glitch tees and a glitch design and some beanies. I don't got that thing on me, but you guys loved the e yellow Evo jet tags. We restocked those as well, along with the other Evo merch. Every $5 you guys spend at 53supply.com gets you one chance into winning this R35 GTR plus $5,000 cash. And it's December 31st. Good luck, everybody, and happy shopping. You're gonna be comfy. Mm. What's up, guys? Whoa! That's funky, I don't like that. Since moving into this house, we've had some interesting uh, experiences with neighbors. Recently, I just met uh, Landry, who I've talked about, who's, you know, their parents did our drywall in the shop. Met them, they're really cool people. They told me that they have a really sick collection. I did go over recently and kind of check it out and see it, and it's really cool, but I'm gonna go over today and show you guys my neighbor's insane car collection. Um, I'm trying to figure out, it's just my neighbors, it's right down the road, I'm trying to figure out what I want to drive to his house. I really kind of want to take the Supra, but I don't want to feel like moving the Evo. And I have a Monster right now, but not, and neither of these cars have a cup holder. And if I take the R35, I still got to move the Evo. A few moments later. Oh yeah, it's Supra time, boys. I'm just gonna really hope it doesn't fall over. We don't got a very long way to go. And yes, we live in Texas. My neighbor is not like, adjacent to me and or within talking distance, we have this thing called land. These guys are cool too. What's up, bro? That's a Supra, dog. <laughs> My monster didn't spill coming over here, so I'm happy. No spills. It's pretty, it's pretty small. Well, guys, this is my neighbor. This is Landry. What's up, bro? What's up? Put it there. We won't do an awkward handshake yeah, this fine. time. That's exactly what I was thinking. So, um, I was detailing my car. You're, yeah, her, his mom just walked up to our backyard, and my first thought was like, oh crap, what do we do this time? Because we haven't had that great of experience with neighbors so far. Because the person behind us like was is really mad at us, and uh, she just walks up. She's like, hey. We just want to meet you guys, <laughs> and, uh, and that's pretty much it. So you guys have been really nice, and we've gotten to know you guys ever since, and you guys have burnout marks in your driveway, so I like it. I guess I'll fit in here. But uh, anyway, so this is your dad's collection. He didn't, I guess he just didn't want to be on camera, so, and I get that. I probably wouldn't either if I didn't do this for a living. Yeah, these guys have a really insane car collection. I posted a little picture, a teaser picture of this on Twitter. Everybody's like, damn. We gotta see everything, so. Yeah, I guess let's just go through and Landry, show me. Let's talk about all of them. Show me everything you guys got, because like there we'll, is. We'll do this one last. Okay, um, just I wanna show you guys here. this. I wanna show you guys this right here. This is real. You guys watch it TV in the 2000s. This, this, I watched, I think, I'm pretty sure I watched this get built as a kid on TV. Dude, this is so cool. All right, so we've got several cars here, but uh, <laughs> I think this is my favorite. I'm sure a lot of them know. Lincoln Continental. 67 Lincoln Continental. Picked it up in an auction probably three years ago and it's still factory stock numbers matching. Everything's original in it. Dude, like hopping in this thing is like, you know, actually, I just want to get in the back. The back, <laughs> dude, this thing is like a time machine. I don't even like sitting in the back of cars. I get like really claustrophobic and weird about it, but I could sit back here. I, I could cruise downtown, drive on the highway in this thing. You guys ever drive these at all? Not, not really. Yeah, that's like the, I probably wouldn't biggest, either, yeah. but. That's like our biggest deal with like the batteries always running out and stuff. Because... I get that for sure. Dude, like look at, dude, this thing is just like, this is, wasn't this a car JFK got shot in? It was, but JFK was shot in a convertible. That's a little sensitive topic, I guess, but uh, <laughs> I just always, like, dude, this thing is a boat. I'm not honestly a huge, like, old car fan but look at how honestly this is like so advanced imagine this in the 70s like rolling in this thing in the 70s whipping up to a movie theater and somebody opens the suicide door for you and you're just like yeah i am that cool <laughs> dude you can fit oh my god i didn't even notice this but yeah you you could you could, you could several boxes you could pull up you, you could pull up and yeah wow that is uh 
That is a lot of space. If this thing closed on you, it would decapitate you. Yeah. Wow. I know limited to, to nothing about these. What, what motor does this thing have? You guys are learning with me today. I might not love old cars, but I appreciate the hell out of them. Because if it wasn't for these, I wouldn't have my Supra. We wouldn't have our, our Mustangs, our current gen yeah, stuff that we really like. 462. Damn! This thing is really meant. Genuinely just impressed with everything. Does it run? Have you ever tried to yeah. start it? Yeah. yeah, if it doesn't start, I'm not gonna shame you because I'm pretty sure there's several. I'm pretty sure it does though because this is like the only one that will like continuously start. <laughs> oh! A little, little pumpy action. Oh, yeah! Dude! Imagine pulling up somewhere in the 70s in this thing. <laughs> Damn! That's a little exhaust leak for you. Yeah, that's alright. Dude, that is, man, this is. Cool. I try and place myself as far back in time as possible and envision this in like real time and like how sick would this be to see this rolling down a little town. Well, so that's number one of the collection and you guys obviously have so many more. I can't wait to hear about some of these like muscle cars with the, with the big fatties on the back. The 442 is so cool. This, this one is particularly awesome. Yes, this one so... We got this one, and it was I all to, original like, still. like, raise the camera <laughs> so <laughs> high. Six, Hold five. on. I go up to his neck, maybe? <laughs> like, okay. And this one was actually my grandpa's, and he gave it to me and my dad, and we had it restored by a guy here in town. Pretty much the only original pieces of this truck left are the body panels and the bed. Because we yeah. have, a, like, a whole new frame. There it goes. Brand new 350. <laughs> wow. Um, That's pretty. With a brand new uh, 350 turbo trans. What was that? Look at this. How pretty this dark blue paint is. Um, Dang. But it, it actually is all the original chrome pieces. Okay. That have been re-chromed and stuff. Look at, the, okay, so hopping in this thing. This is so awesome. Yeah, so where's the odometer at? Here you go. There you go, guys. Those are all zeros up until the last number, so that's, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Man, what year is this? It's a 53. 50, I was gonna say this, I feel like I'm in the 50s right now. I've, this is cool, have you guys ever entered this into any shows? Yeah, it was in Autorama of Dallas two years ago, and it took first place in the whole Wow, show. that's so sick, man. Yeah! Wow, it purrs. That is like such a nice, smooth. Dude. This thing is awesome. Where's the exhaust? Oh, here it is. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so cool. My heart belongs to the 2JZ, but it's still, I love hearing, especially the old, older cars, with these little small blocks open up and start up. It's just. It's cool. Okay, we're gonna go from this guy all the way. So this is a 442. Who makes this one again? Oldsmobile. It's Oldsmobile. A little cutlass 442. Okay, I was gonna say it looks like a Pontiac. And a common misconception for these cars is a lot of people think that 442 is like the cubic inch or whatever. I was gonna ask, okay. But it actually stands for four barrel carburetor, four speed transmission, and dual exhaust. Wow, that's an interesting one. We did actually just, uh, I was filming my feet just in case this thing did start up. They wanted to fill it up with gas. This thing's kind of crazy. You fill it up with gas. Wait, how do you go down? Look at that, that's where you fill up gas. Anyways, uh, this thing is, so is this thing pretty close to a GTO? Like, in styling? I think they're like. Anyways, I'm gonna show you the startup real quick and then we'll go back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Wow! <laughs> oh, it smells good. It's, it's like it smells old, but like it smells good. <laughs> so this is a 455 rocket. It's a 7.5 liter, and <laughs> so the rocket motors were 
only offered in Oldsmobile. Oldsmobile. Yeah. yeah. Only Oldsmobile for the rocket motor. So that's an OE motor. That's yes, seven and a half liters. Yeah, because Oldsmobile offered either wow. a 350 rocket or a 455 rocket. But all the GM companies use 455s except for Chevy. Okay. We had the, seven, the 454 that everyone knows about. Okay. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So this is technically the same package as what a 454 would be like an gotcha. SS, except it's Man, Oldsmobile. big boy. No wonder it sounded so good. Dude, oh, so yeah, this this kind of looks like the old Judge style front end. Again, I don't know too much, but because of the, all the racing games and stuff I've played over the years, I kind of know what the front ends of these some of these cars look like, so I'm trying to, you know, get in the the yeah. brain collection of what I know about these older cars at this point, but... Definitely not Japanese. Yeah. <laughs> A heavy tank door, bro. That is nice. Yeah, look at these old, these old school like studded seats and stuff like that. Like, imagine you would be such a badass going down the street in this. In the freaking what, what year is this? Like a seventy? This is a seventy-two. Okay. And so the cool thing about the four forty-twos that came with the automatic transmission is they came with this uh, Hurst style shifter. It's called yeah. A, it's called a his and hers. That's kind of was this like the original right? Hurst? Because I know that's a big thing for Mustangs now. Um. I'm not sure. But that's so, but this is this an, is that's the, an original part. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to say it without being like gender. It whatever. doesn't. This was the '70s. <laughs> not not say it how they would in the okay, '70s. Okay, so in the '70s, they had your normal side right here. Yeah. For automatic driving, uh -huh. as if your wife was driving. But if you get in the car, you've got your <laughs> shift over to the side. One, two, three, bump shifter. Okay. Or if you were like hot rod <laughs> Definitely or whatever. cannot say that uh, without HR getting on you these days. But <laughs> I guess, uh, you know, that's what they did. Yeah, that's Eric correct. So and that's why Oldsmobile is not a company anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, honestly, I love looking at older cars and seeing like no crack dash, right? Like, they, 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 I mean, this is mint. How long have you guys had this one? We bought this one, I want to say back in 2015. Okay. Probably the, like November 2015. So we actually, my dad bought this car sight unseen. He ordered it online and had it shipped okay. out here from California. And have y'all done anything to it? We've done nothing to it. It's just, so yeah. I've okay. changed the battery like once. <laughs> Um, hella mods. They sit, yeah, hella mods. It's got like electric fans, electric fuel electric, pump, yeah. and uh, some some conversions to make it a little more modern. But uh, um, man, I'm sure this thing would be would get up. I think this is aside from the Foos Mustang that we're about to talk about here at the end. My brain and eyes immediately went straight to like the how big the tires were on this one and the car behind it. But like just some just some fat boys. Back in the, I just, I can just imagine our generation of car enthusiasts, but like 40, 50, okay, I guess 50 years ago now. Jeez, that's weird to think about. 50 years ago would just be like all over this at the drag strip, having fun back in the day. But man, that's so cool. Oldsmobile oh, four, Cutlass, four, Cutlass four, four, two. four four two. That is so funny. It's crazy to think that Oldsmobile went from this to like the. They made some really ugly cars yeah. in the 90s. Like yeah. some really ugly really stuff. Ugly. <laughs> I guess to be fair, so did Pontiac. So as much as I want to talk about this one, this thing is funky and I love it. I want I want to talk about this. Is this a Nash? This is a Nash Metropolitan. It's a 1958 and it has, I think 23,000 original miles. Wow. It was a barn find and it was restored and this is another one we got at the auctions. This was this is something you would be like playing Forza Horizon or something these days and you'd be like, oh, barn find has appeared. And you find this and then, you know, you do LS swaps and stuff like that. But like, this thing is cool I, for a lot of reasons, but it's also just so unique. It's the smart car of the 50s. Yeah, so who, do you know who made Nash? American Motors? Like Dude, I mean, it's, it's so cool and in stash, it almost looks like a Reliant, like the three wheel cars, but like, you know, with four wheels and capable, but I don't know if you could put this hood ornament on in uh, today's society. I want to sit in this car real bad here in a second. This looks, dude, this is tight. This is like the, this is like Miata sized. Can you fit in this car? I can actually. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so I came over here and saw this the other day and uh, my first thought was, damn, this engine bay's got a huge room for a turbo. Now, obviously, I don't think that would work very well because like I, I, this motor's probably not very efficient, but uh, this is a little teeny four cylinder. I mean, look at that. You got so much like on the intake spark side over here. That's, dude, nuts. Like your distributor's all the way down there. Exhaust manifold, teeny tiny. Look at that, teeny teeny tiny boy. And then you got a little little carburetor up here. This it's that's so cool. And like they really just compacted and fit so much stuff 
into this engine bay, and even the engine bay is tiny. Like, do you know what size the motor is? Well, it's a uh, 1.2 liter. <laughs> So. <laughs> Basically a little bit bigger than a motorcycle. Smaller motor. than a Coke bottle. <laughs> Look at these old, I love the old styling of this. This is like, this is cool. And I, you know, it's funny, like, I'm glad this went out of style, but I do appreciate it when I see it. Like the fenders that go over the wheel. I don't really know how changing wheels and tires on this would be, but uh, then the chrome that like divides the two-tone paint. And look at this, like, I mean, this is stamped metal. Like this is one piece of stamped metal with like the little details in the door and stuff like that. You got little chrome accents everywhere. You got little like felt for the windshield. It's just cool. Like this is really cool. The attention to detail and design and probably the incredible overuse of metal in these cars from this day and age was so awesome. Push it? Like, is it locked? Oh, that's cool. But they need that in SC300s because those will kill you. Okay, so. Oh, that's incredibly comfy, and the whole car just moved as I hopped in here. Not very much. <laughs> wow. So this thing has 20,000 miles on it? Or is that 20? Yeah. 20. This isn't too outdated at this point. You still see some Jeeps and stuff like that with these, but like, you pull the choke to start the car, and you got the heater. You could just pull the heater. I've actually driven Jeeps with stuff like this from like the 90s and stuff like that. So it's not too. Starter pull. I mean, dude, this is like old school. This is like the tiniest little dash. Put it in neutral. Which one is neutral? <laughs> uh, centered, so it'll be. So you gotta pull it. Okay. So which, what, what is, like, I've never shifted on a, on, a, on a three on the tree before. So like, what is the gearing on this? So to you and up is reverse. To you and down is first. To you and away up. Away from you and up is second and then down third. So, first gear. Yes. Second gear. Yep. Third gear. Yep. So there you go. And then uh, pull. Starter for, that's how you pull yep. it like that? Yep. Wow. <laughs> Yo. And then you're choking it to get some, okay, here we go, here we go. Dude. This thing. <laughs> wow. It honestly has this motor ever been rebuilt? Do you know? I have no idea. Because it purrs uh, really, really nicely. Sounds like a little Miata. Look at that! One inch exhaust pipe. Let's go! Nice! I wonder what a straight pipe would sound like on this baby. But that's just such a unique car that I, I love it because like you you wouldn't go to anybody's garage and just see this. This is probably something I will never see again. So, so awesome. And it just looks like a futuristic, a future classic, old school. It looks like it could be on the Jetsons, honestly. Exactly. That's probably what they were going for back in the day. This is so sick. I always go for the weird stuff, and so I'm gonna be honest, I think this is probably my favorite car out of the bunch. <laughs> okay, so we got two more really, really cool ones. This, uh, this is a, sh um, what, Chevelle? 70, 70 Chevelle. Chevelle. Yeah. So I, as I've said many times, I'm not really a fan of older cars, of muscle cars, but my favorite era of muscle car, and if I had to buy one myself, was like 68 to 71 for GM cars. I love a 68, uh, 69 Camaro is my favorite actually. 1969 Camaro is like, if I ever had to buy an old car, it would be that. And this is this resembles it in a lot of ways, but it's got its own little unique stuff. This is another one we got at the auction. Um, We've had this one for about six years. Okay. I mean, we bought this one and I used to drive to high school like all the time. Yeah, I would too, dude. Good memories in this one. Uh, it's you just got a- You ever do any burnouts in it? Yeah, we, back in high school we did. Uh, <laughs> we don't drive it very much anymore. Uh, dude, we actually just got these. it back from the shop. It's got just a little 350 in it. It's got some mega it. recliner mode seats, bro. You just be absolute chilling in this car. God dang, hold up. You just hop in this thing and it's just like, we are swinging in this car. Kind of like Friday. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you got a Kenwood in this. What? Popping out watching some TV on the way to school or something. <laughs> I like the, the carbon fiber little inlays and stuff like that. Damn, this is cool. This yeah. looks a, this looks like a little bit more modernized, but like it fits. Mm -hmm. it this looks is really some cool. of the stuff that we just recently got done. Like we got it back like a month ago. Okay. We had this put in all new gauges, new dash, 212s. Are you going to drive trunk. it again? I'm sure I will someday. Does it start? Probably not. Battery, you said. Yeah. Uh, rip. Ooh, I see that. You got the. So you got the Willwood. Oh, is that an a, is that an ABS res or something like that, yeah, or is we that? Just, we just put that on. Um, put, put aftermarket air, power wow. windows, power locks. I was gonna say you, you can't really see them, but uh, I'm sure it's got some cool brakes back there. 
Such a menacing old sound. Imagine just like sitting in your Grand Wagoneer or something back in the day. You hear this pull up to you next to the stop, next to you at a stoplight. <laughs> and you're like, oh, stupid race car drivers. Oh wow. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that is awesome. I wish you guys could smell. Wish you could smell it. That's awesome. Let's move to this guy. This is a 2005 Mustang built by Chip Foose on the show Overhaul, and I believe it was like season three, so that was like back in 2000. This is this is the car. This is this is it. This is cool. I'm I am I'm gonna say like 90% sure I watched this as a kid, but I was so young whenever this came out. I was probably in fifth grade or so. How many miles does it have? It has like 9100. Yeah. As a 2005 Mustang built on the show, I think it immediately went into somebody's collection after that and mm -hmm. just sat nobody's put yeah so tell me about before we talk about the car tell me about how you guys acquired it so it was built for the lady on the show it was built for the lady on the show she sold it like three weeks later so I've heard <laughs> it sat in this guy's collection all these years and we saw it at the auction in Dallas and picked it up I would go ahead and just pop the hood first I did actually watch a lot of the overhaul and old school muscle shows when I was a kid um because I mean I've always been impartial to cars if it's about cars I like it and one thing I love like Chip Foose had some some really cool wheel designs and stuff like that. So super interesting. I, these are either two piece. I think these are two piece or maybe they're just one piece. Chip always had some crazy wheel designs and these are his own custom wheels that he had. Always did a pretty cool job. I mean, it's got like the classic mid 2000s pinstripe stuff like that on it, two tone paint, but it's really clean. Um, and they did a Paxton uh, Pro Charger. Pro charger. So this it's basically is basically a, a belt driven turbo. Yeah. So it's a centrifugal. So it's not the twin screw like you'd see on the top of the motor. Literally just takes a belt, winds it up like a turbo, and it forces air into the motor. Yeah, she's tuned at seven pounds right now. I heard the kit can go up to nine, but she's making 455 to the wheels. That's probably really fun to drive. I mean, this obviously is a custom front bumper. The fog lights are pretty cool right there. It's super unique looking, but it looks, looks like a wider fender. And side skirts. skirts. Yeah. Rear diffuser on the back. So yeah. This was actually the first car to get this kit. I think that's what they said on the show. Okay. Because this was a is this is this, this like the Foose kit? Is this like his kit, I'm or is it? I'm not sure which kit it is. Okay. But I, I know they said it was like a prototype, and this was like the first Mustang to get this kit. Now I'm sure lots of so... Mustangs probably have this kit now, but it's cool. Like, this is the one. We can start it up, and then I'll hop on the inside with him. Yeah. It's just so tame, but really good sounding. One thing that I appreciate out of all the cars that are in here is none of them are like straight piped and overwhelmingly loud. They all just sound good. Ooh boy. Does it have any like blow off whooshy noises whenever you rev it? Yeah. Let's hear it. Yeah. <laughs> Did they do much to the interior of the car? It looks um, like custom seats custom or custom seats like- Custom seats and a custom uh, in the back. I actually really love this generation of Mustang's interior. It's it's so, uh, honestly, it's nice. And they made it look like a classic Mustang, but more modernized. I had a friend in, in uh, high school that had a bullet Mustang that was this body style, and it was so nice. But it's honestly just simple. It's obviously incredibly clean because it's barely been driven. Cat skin, leather interiors. Aside from that, like, some audio, looks like some audio stuff, some actually intriguing looking speakers from the TV show. It's just, yeah. it's so cool. Oh, wow. That's some like Need for Speed Underground type stuff. Some Pimp My Ride. That's cool. Like the custom, this like, wow. I love the casing for like the amps back there. There's a little case over it. That is sick. This is like the little details that you know it was like built for a really good purpose or like for a sh on a show or something. Cause how many people do this to their trunk that's not like a you know obviously like a dedicated show car this thing is so awesome do it do burnouts, <laughs> they do burnouts. <laughs> good is that a supra that's a supra bro that's like we, we should talk about that car next do you just rip it up and down the street sometimes yeah sometimes i do we're like we're like bring it to your house yes <laughs> that's nice wow Ooh. 
Nice. <laughs> well, boys, there is the collection. I appreciate you for taking for a ride for one and for two, starting all of the cars. Yeah. I am, uh, as a car collector myself, I'm surprised that all of them started and I'm very happy because like, it was all so cool. Even from like, this was a blast in the past because I watched this get built and all these are just like so cool. It's like walking through a museum. Something about at least respecting and, and still appreciating the old school stuff that got car culture to where it is today. So cool. If we're doing anything anytime soon, we're just gonna soup this one up, a little more power maybe, and uh, blew around fatties town the in the Stendo mobile. <laughs> this thing put some, is... Put some fatties on the back. Yeah. <laughs> when my kids go to prom someday, I'm just gonna hit you up and be like, yo, can you just drive them? But I will still always love these. 100 generation of cars you like, let's just keep the love of cars alive. Every video I make, I give some sort of daily advice to help you guys. And sort of kind of relative to what we had uh, today, what I want to encourage you guys is in is whatever you're going through right now, if it's really bad, if it's really tough, someday you're gonna look back at it and you're gonna be like, man, I'm thankful that I made it through it, but I'm also thankful that it happened. You have no idea how much you learn through life experiences that may hurt like hell. Uh, awkwardly relevant, but like, if it wasn't for some of the really bad stuff that we've done with cars, we wouldn't have made the beautiful ones and we wouldn't have made the cool stuff. Time is always going and you are always progressing. You are always bettering yourself. So just know, whatever you're going through right now, you can get through it and you're gonna look back at it someday and you're gonna be thankful that you made it through it and you're gonna be thankful for the things you've learned in it. Thank you guys for watching and a big thanks again to, to my neighbors because that's cool and man, I would love to have a neighbor someday that's like, let me see all your cars and see if they start. Do all mine start? No, I have like a lot of them. No. Remember guys, you guys can win in my R35 GTR and $5,000 cash. Click that link in the top of the description and get to shopping and good luck. Y'all have an amazing day and I'll see you guys next video. Peace. Hey, I got two videos for you, baby. Hey, guess what? I'm actually gonna lower the skyline down for the first time in like three months. You like that, guys? Me too. Make sure you subscribe. And good luck in the entries, by the way.